You know, if you've watched him through the years, you see a certain, I don't know what that was tonight, just a certain suffering, certain maturity, certain work of God in his life and in his face. And I'm so glad, Scott Depot, you would open up your heart, not only to Barbara, myself, Ann and Brian, and Naomi when she came, but to all that became our love. Because uh, with Brother Ham came a beautiful family. Robert Allen was saved after we found Brother Ham. And so we've seen God do some wonderful things. John Cullum was saved after. John was a man way out, way out. And only a man like Lauren Helm could have ever gotten him back. And only a mighty God working through him could have ever gotten John back. Because he was like Rodney and he was as cool and collected as Rodney and as brilliant if he had anything to do with the church, he would burn it down. And well, that may sound pretty bad to us. But when you and I do not live up to our profession, that's what happens to people who suffer that disappointment. We're professing a great thing. We profess a great Lord, a great Creator, and we profess at least to be yearning to love people like he does. It's really something to bear the name of Christ. You are a very special church. And uh, Robert's at home here. And uh, I got a lot out of your hands as he finished. I think it's, I think Filler on the Roof is so delightful. I think he probably has done more for the Jewish people than most any single thing in this century that that uh, musical right there it's a lovely musical I don't know if Dee's ever been in Fiddler or not but Carousel we know she's been in Fiddler's really really very special and Robert really puts his heart into it he's, the character's developed since he's done it in his own life and uh, I'm grateful for that almost was wishing for Peggy and Rabbi there they could see him do that. They would enjoy that very much. But I heard the love in your hands. And that's, a, that's marvelous. I'm glad we have a place here where we can carefully, carefully be broader than what we might have been. And with carefulness, because it's very dangerous to be broader. And I'm very careful with leading you in these these areas but it's very important to be broader because it includes some who would not otherwise be included who are very dear and very honest of heart and you know we haven't been led to go back to uh, the, any musical sense God may lead you may not I don't think I personally don't think that we'll ever have sound of music or any other musical here just my thought it's a good thought but I don't think it will be. I know the Vienna Choir boys are to be here next January. So you just don't know what God's going to do. But I'm glad for the time that our Pam played Julie in Carousel. And I'm glad for the sporting actress. I'm so glad that we found her. We loved her. And we told, I told Robert, I said, Robert, she's a natural. She's great. But did you know? That in the last few years, she's not done any acting, even though her heart, she's natural, but she's not done any. The reason for it is because she's been determined to follow God and to do His will, love her husband, and love her children. And she's been faithful to that duty. But in that musical, we came together by God's grace. And we loved her, not with, not with, not with carnal hands, not to push or press or to say anything other than we love you, D, and um, we're behind you wherever God leads you. And to have her here, see, is great. To have her here with us, because she hasn't even begun to be turned loose. There's so much in her 
that her, her, oh, I don't know at all. But she can give orations like this. And she not only can sing, she can act. But see, it's how God leads. The other night, she said she was going to, you know, for all you skeptics, listen to what I've got to say. You must believe now. You see, the Holy Spirit operated, and she could tell it ahead of time. And here was this horrible experience or two that she had had. And yet, Jesus wanted the witness to her life that he was with her. And that was what came through by God's grace. Good is not good unless, unless the Holy Spirit's leading. It can become damaging. And so we cast aside all thoughts of what we might like to do, knowing that he may let a dream come true somewhere in our life. But something greater than that happens. The bigger dream of our heart comes true. God's love, our fulfillment. It's really something how in self-denial, like in what God's doing in Dee's life, what he's doing in Robert's life, what he's doing in our lives, that many things we have to leave aside either for a while or forever. But in, in that very in that very act, God is not taking away anything from us that would hurt us, but bringing us to something greater and really fulfilling the deepest dream of our heart and that of joy and peace and of happiness and of friendship. What is just in that one poem on John and Jim? You see, goodness, that relationship between me and between you is so valuable that we must not let anything interfere with that. Must not, by God's grace. While I was under anointing, sharing with you this morning, I was working so very hard, even though under that great anointing, that I could include every person in the building. And that though we may be quickened and chastened as a people, that we would not back away from God's love and from his reach. It's so important. It's so vital. Pray that God will use your... See, your Rodus was so right a while ago that God will use your, your being renewed. We've, we've come all these years in death and in much self-denial for the work of God in the next year, two, three, four, or five. Maybe just a little longer than that. But God's brought us all this way. And there's been suffering. And there's been great times of pressure. But you've been willing to be not only chastened, but sanctified. And that's in the chastening that God may use us and may be able to trust us in these last days. And I believe they are the last days. I thank you for that willingness. I thank you for that love. And uh, each one of you, I don't have a mindset against anything concerning your life. I want everything that you want. And Robert, for Robert, I want everything that he wants. And I'm praying that Robert, as well as you, and as well as myself, will be willing to to take this cross and in taking this cross come to the place of blooming and of completement and of fulfillment one man is leading us really and I and I honor his life as you honor his life I pray that we may be willing to hear his exhortations I pray that you'll be reading a voice in the wilderness I pray See, because <clears throat> there's one man in Florida now that's read it over 60 times. And, and uh, that's that brother from Oregon. He, and he's really changing him. When I saw him and I saw his face, he wasn't like the man that I met years ago. He's really getting it down in his heart. I picked it up afresh and started last week, got through the first six chapters. And that's the genealogy part. That's where Gene Crane got all hung up and couldn't hardly, hardly make it. But I saw that it was fresher for me this time than 
how many times I've read it for, 17 or 18 times, whatever, somewhere between 15 and 20 times. So God's calling us, and he's calling us to love him supremely, to do his will, and love each other. I thank you for responding as a people today. And I thank you for obeying the word of God. It's been a blessed day, hasn't it? It's been a great day. Before we go tonight, let's take the offering and then we'll close with Dick and Mike. Ushers, would you come forward and we will give.